Achtung, achtung. Welcome to We Have Ways of Making You Talk with me, Al Murray, and James Holland. And the keen-eared amongst you will detect a different ambience on our microphone because we are somewhere very special, aren't we, Jim? Yeah, we are. We're in the Churchill War Rooms, formerly the Cabinet War Rooms, part of the Imperial War Museum. You know, and this was uh, where the War Cabinet and a lot of the business of government was done during the dark days of the Blitz in the but winter of 4041. You're leaning on a steel reinforced thing that must be part of the... The structure that they built here yep. and then poured full of concrete yep. and we're under however much concrete and there's two very earnest looking mannequins just over there, yes. one with his red tabs, yep. uh, deciding the fate of nations. Um, but we're not here to we're not here to talk about the cabinet war rooms, are we? Well, n- not not this, just at the moment. No, but not. I mean, but you know, m- people might expect us to come down here and then yep. talk about the cabinet. We're not gonna, we're not going to do that, are we? No, we're going to talk about art, <laughs> mm-hmm. and specifically <laughs> with, with, with a with a very um, very special guest today because um, everyone knows who Philip Mould is. He's a gallery owner, art historian, art dealer, um, known to everyone from a while back the Antiques Work Roadshow, but more recently Fake and Fortune. I've got to say, I absolutely love that program. And um, Philip, it's great to great to be here because this is a this is a very very auspicious day, isn't it? Because today we're well, you are revealing a, a kind of sort of a, a portrait of Churchill that was painted during the war, the only wartime live portrait, and it's on public show for the first time ever. And I think probably it's fair to say seen for the first time in 75 years with its whole history behind it. And as we know, when you know a little bit more about the art you're looking at, so the story unfolds. So, Philip, how how have we ended up with a a portrait, the only wartime portrait of Churchill, having been absent from the from the record how, how on earth has that happened well I, I think probably one needs to go back as, as, as to why the thing was done in the first place because it's, it's it's all connected churchill was massively resistant to sitting uh, and you can see his reasons for that i mean he wasn't exactly not busy during the, the second world war um <laughs> and also it would have appeared probably from a political point of view rather decorous to be seen lounging in, our, in an artist's studio when the when the Nazi peril was still at large, yeah, um, and and his secretary would write letters saying, you know, no, we're not we're not going to actually give any sittings. But the power of the City of London forced him, shoehorned him into having to do a big painting in the ni- in the nineteen forty four period um, of him receiving the freedom of the City of London, a great many headed picture of which Churchill was the centre, and so it was on his way to check as Clementine was waiting for him. Uh, with V2 bombs, you know, at that period, dropping down on London. It was one of the reasons they, that the Cabinet came here later on to the Cabinet war rooms. One fell the next day. The yeah. next day he was, he was being painted on um, Woolworths in New Cross, killing tragically 160 people. He then called by the studio of Frank Salisbury, who was the veteran portrait painter around. You know, all, you know he was later to be described as, as Britain's... Uh, painter laureate, you know, huge swathes of, of, of the establishment had fallen to his brush, um, full presidents of America. Um, he'd already painted two portraits of, of Churchill from photographs, blood, sweat and tears and the siren suit. But now he had the thing that he'd been longing for, that the, the, the living, breathing co- colossus was in his studio. Um, although the, the, the city began really quite badly. Mm. Uh, Churchill was two and a half hours late. He said you'd only give Paul Salisbury 10 minutes. Um, He fidgeted, lit a cigar, um, assumed a facial expression which Salisbury uh, said would frighten the public. (laughs) Um, But but Salisbury was possessed of an extraordinary artistic ability, the capacity to capture an oil likeness at speed. And he waylaid the Prime Minister for for half an hour and then produced this, this vibrant head painting, head sketch, which he then transposed, he copied into the large painting yeah. um, of him, of Churchill receiving uh, the freedom, which you can actually see at the Guildhall. Um, Churchill remarked three weeks later in a letter that it was a remarkable likeness given the time, but the painting basically just disappeared. It went into the artist's studio. And we found a photograph 10 years on Um, of Salisbury standing rather proudly next to it, to the right of his fireplace. But then he did something maddening. He inscribed it with the wrong date. And so 
assured its obscurity um, thereafter. And I remember 35 years ago as a sort of fledgling dealer seeing this painting come up at auction. Um, it was the contents of the artist's studio. And no one knew what it was except it was just an amazing face. It then disappeared off to the States. And during lockdown, it came back to be sold. And then we were um, engaged to research it. And extraordinarily, it's then history, which had been lost to us, 75 years, then came tumbling out. And we suddenly realised what we were looking at. With Salisbury, he's an incredibly talented man if he can... If he can get you with oils in half an hour. He's he's really old school, isn't he? I mean, he he's complete establishment as well and and you know, he's 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 painted George V, hasn't he, and George VI. So he's sort of rubbing shoulders with royalty and he's kind of not new age by any stretch of the imagination. No, and and also Clementine, who we know was extremely protective of Winston Churchill's portraits. She did, after all, burn one. The famous yes, I was going to say we're going to get on to that at <laughs> yeah. some point. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, she was she was she was a real Cerberus when it came to controlling his image, and actually was you know probably served Churchill really well in that respect. She didn't like Salisbury at all. In fact, it was a miracle that it happened. So yes, he was an old school guy. He's that tradition of portrait painting that we have in this country. It goes back four or five hundred years. Starts with Holbein and Van Dyck, and it's in a sense separate to to mainstream modern art. Uh, it's performing a purpose. It's it's a bargain between two people. It's a, a form of the sort of establishment hierarchical art. And yeah. he was he was brilliant at it. I mean, that's really why you have a National Portrait Gallery and a, and a National Gallery, isn't it? Is that is that there are these two flows of art running alongside each other. And, and capital A art is a sort of 20th century invention anyway, isn't it? That yes. is sort of floated away from art, uh, the artist's previous traditions and role, isn't it? wouldn't you say? I, mean, I would. And, and in fact, it's interesting you should raise that because... Because, you know, you might ask, well, what is the purpose of art now? You know, why are we, why are we looking at a, a painting of Winston Churchill? You know, how does it help our apprehension of history? And in a debate in, to start the National Portrait Gallery, the historian Carlyle, I think it was around about that date, said that portraiture is, is like a lighted candle by which historical biographies can be read. And I think, I think that's its purpose. And I think there's, the, the, you know, you could see it in people like Laura Knight later on, that there is a sort of a, a literal visual aid quality to it yeah. that can really help. Yeah, that maybe a photograph can't offer. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sort of interested about about, about uh, Frank Owen Salisbury. I mean, he, he's got he's pretty humble beginnings, doesn't he? And, and you know, that, that picture that you sent us of him standing by the portrait um, sometime after the war, I mean, you know, he looks a bit of a dandy, but he looks a pretty conservative dandy if such things possible. So, so he, he, he was a teetotaler, he was a Quaker, he was, he was very different temperamentally from, from, from the wartime colossus Winston Churchill, but he had this, this thing that a lot of great portrait painters have, and that is a, a skill with people, um, so he put them at ease, and he made huge sums of money, uh, because if you can please society, if you can create a likeness and give someone a good opinion of themselves, mm. I mean, he could do that. And that is, you know, a large part of the role of society portrait painting or yeah. establishment portrait painting. Um, you do make money, and so he lived in a in a palace in Hampstead. Yeah, uh, and you can imagine, you know, in the, in in the dark of night, you know, in 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 blackout, semi blackout at that point, Churchill sort of arriving two and a half hours late next to this sort of these great portals, and then being ushered in, and then this guy in spats, this teetotal painter in spats, then. <laughs> then, 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 jumping upon the subject that he had, he'd been desperate to paint. There's, there's lots of correspondence to suggest that um, it was the thing he he really needed to do to finish his career in a way. It was, right. It was, you know, he was the ultimate goal for 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 an establishment portrait painter. We just need to take a quick break. We'll see you in a tick. Welcome back to We Have Ways of Making You Talk. Right, well, we've come through to the plant room where the portrait is on display in some, in some light, and uh, that's why you can hear the jaunty sounds of the 1940s in the background. <laughs> um, what an image. Incredible. If, this, that, if that's half an hour... Yeah, that's quite something, isn't it? Can yeah. you, it's a, I mean, 
the paintwork on it, can you tell that that's done quickly? So, so we're moving in now to see it up close. And I think all the evidence is there of, of the encounter, as it were. I suspect what he'd done is probably prepared the canvas, had, had, had sort of blocked in certain areas. He knew roughly where he wanted the head. But if you look at these strokes, these sort of, sort of, sort of random, energetic, expressive... Swish, there. Swish yeah. defining strokes, aren't they, rather than rather than generic, because his head shape sort of, head and ear appears generic, and then as you go into his bone structure, his cheeks and his jowls, I mean the Churchill jowls, they're... They're there, aren't they? Yeah, you can yeah. see he's, 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 it's like a conversation that he's having with Churchill, he's, he's, he's sort of pushing into his face, trying to express in the, in the given time everything that he needs. And the, the, the other point about it, I think, which is, which is quite interesting is, you compare it to paintings done from photographs, which Salisbury does, and you don't have any of the, that feeling of sort of vitality, the, the, the possibility of something going wrong, the, the sort of virtuoso moment of whacking the paint on the canvas. It's much more sedate. Yeah. This is, I mean, you can see that little lighter pink on the chin. That, that's a quick dab, but, isn't it? But, but Philip, he also looks, he's, it looks like he's taken time over his eyes, which is interesting, isn't it? Yes. They, seem, they seem far more defined in the... In the brushwork, so so, yes. that, uh, and there the window window to the soul, as it were. So he spent the time on that, and then come out. That, that that's how it appears to me. Yeah, anyway. and and it's quite possible that he that like all artists, you'd have tickled it up afterwards as well. Yeah, of know, course. But, yeah, but there's certain areas which obviously he was lacking the information for because that half an hour was not enough. And if you look at the hand, it's just blocked in. Yeah, yeah. There's no modelling at all. What, what I also love is is, is rather beautifully tied, if I might say bow tie. I've always tried to do that and never pulled it off. <laughs> but, 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 but look at the foreshortening of it. and That can only be done from life as well. Yeah. You can imagine that from a photograph. It would just look rather doughy. Yes. Um, uh, but you could almost untie it by looking at it. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. It's, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, in terms of sort of historical importance, where does this sit, do you think? I mean, this is supremely important because, you know, Historical portraiture is as much about when it was painted, the circumstances of, of, the, of the contract, as it were, um, uh, as anything else. This is Churchill at the very moment um, that you want him. I mean, this is the blood, sweat and tears time. Um, and the fact that he resisted sitting during the war, but then yet found the time, I suspect he was strong-armed, um, by by the city, they were you know the city, the immutable power of the city. You know they they can get what they want when they really yeah. want it. Um, so I, I think it's the coming together of, of of the right artists and the subject at the right moment, and the the painting bears all the evidence of that encounter. Yeah. Uh, and 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 it, you know we, we are still you know this is a war that yet has yet to be won, um, and and he's there still still leading. I, I, I mean, I'm looking at it, wondering what he's thinking about. <laughs> thinking, I need to go to Checkers. Well, or V2s. He's worried about the V2s, Jim, because yeah, maybe. this is, the, this is the, that dark autumn where London is being blitzed all over again and, mm. and, and Market Gardens failed. Oh, there you go, I jemmed it in. So, <laughs> so they haven't been able to do anything about Holland. Bad winter and coming. Bad, it's a bad winter coming, James. That's right, well done. <laughs> but the thing, about, I mean, the thing about, that strikes me is actually he looks younger there than I think of him when I think of him as in his wartime position. There's still a little bit of sort of, you know, gingery yeah. colour in his hair. He's not gone completely silver. When well, you look at black and white photographs of him, you just assume he's an old man. Well, and actually, because you've got, you've got flesh and colour... And, and colour as, as, as a prized at that moment as well. Uh, not, not, yes. Not, yeah. it, it actually makes him look a little bit younger than I kind of thought he looked. I think that's a really good point. And some excellent research done by the Imperial War Museum has has demonstrated that at this period he was, was looking unusually healthy. I think someone had had a, had a pop at him as well, had tried to shoot him somewhere as well, um, or machine gun a fire um, had nearly hit him. Um, the war was beginning to turn, um, and um, uh, observers just say he was looking very well in himself. And I think you've got a, an element of that in the painting. Yeah, well, he was repeatedly ill during the war. I mean, you know, he had that terrible bout of pneumonia in North Africa, didn't yeah, he? And, yeah, and, you know, it was touch and go at one point, and... You know, um, but but yeah, I mean, he looks he looks extremely hale and hearty at that particular moment. And like you say, younger than 
younger than one's image of him. Yeah, I think so. I think so. There's mm. sort of there's, there's colour in the cheeks, there's, there's colour in the lips and eyes, and there's colour in the hair, which I think is mm. the, the key thing. Mm. Um, and and this is th this is information that would be almost impossible to get from the sort of photographs that were available at the period. Yeah, you actually have to see it. And you have to sort of see the direction you think the face is going and almost catch it. You know, hence the idea of a, a speaking likeness. That, that, that the, real, the real achievement of a portrait painter, I think, and some may disagree, is getting the sense of the sitter being in the space long enough to be painted, but you know he's performing and, and, and he or she is about to move on. Mm. And you feel slightly that he's, he's, he's playing the part for the, for the brush, uh, but there are other jobs to do still. Yeah. I mean, I've got to say, I, I, I actually love it because it's not quite as finished as it might be had he got more than half an hour. I, I mm. like the fact that there's, there's so much detail on the, on the face, shirt and bow tie and everything else is sort of melting out of that focal central point. So that helps draw you to that incredibly 3D-esque mm. face mm. that you're looking at that just looks, you know, particularly if you... I'm now standing, what, about three, four yards away, mm. suddenly that, that looks like such a full face, doesn't it? It's amazing mm. how, it, mm. how it, it comes into full form the yeah. further back you go. I mean, it's funny, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm heartened that th this is the only portrait. I'm glad he didn't have time or, or think, regard himself as having time for this sort of, <laughs> sort of thing. I like that this, this is... This I li Exactly. <laughs> well, the more important things to worry about. I like that this is... So this has that, you know, that... Re mm. First of all, the rarity and that immediacy of it being done really quickly. I, I, I like the fact there aren't lots and lots of contemporaneous war leader Churchill paintings. I mm. think it's, mm. it's, it's to his credit, isn't it? Which is interesting because he is regarded as a politician who was very interested in cultivating and controlling his image. But, but in the 1940s, you're controlling the image to the point of not having one, like of, mm. of, 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 of removing it from the, the record. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas nowadays, what you do is endless photo ops, don't you? And you, yep. you, you know, if you're Boris, you drive through... You know, you come out of hiding a hat and a high -vis jacket. exactly high vis jacket. You come hide in a fridge or whatever. But the, but, the, but, <laughs> but this is this is in a different you know different era of image control, isn't it? Where actually what you don't do is have lots of paintings done for because it's vain, isn't it? Now although Churchill was vain, it's the wrong kind of vanity, isn't it? If you're posing all the time, and and I think he was probably persuaded to do it because it was part of a much bigger project, yeah. showing him with with a lot of dignitaries from the city. And I, th I think you've got to also remind yourself with this painting what its purpose was. It disappeared. It didn't have a public function. This was Salisbury looking at the Prime Minister, getting as much information down as he could, so he could literally copy it, transpose it into this huge canvas. Yeah. So this is reference material, and, and as such, I think, has got an integrity about it, which perhaps mm. a more finished, polished society how, production wouldn't. In the larger canvas, how big is Churchill? He, he, he's, he's about sort of... I would say two thirds human size. I mean, it's a big, it's a big, big, it's a big, painting. big painting. Not to tell you the truth, a very successful painting either, because that type of sort of grandiloquent historical document of, of members of the city and the handing over moment and the sort of ceremonial content was was by this time, you know, something of the past, yeah. a bit antiquated of the past. But but the elements within it, like this picture, are well, the, the, inter ones. the interesting thing about that is that is about life size, isn't it? That's about one to one, pretty much. I, I would say, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think it is. So um, this is really almost a, it's 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 not a sketch, but it's but it's a it's a study for a for a completely different work, yeah. which is extraordinary, isn't it? Because because to, to me it looks it's obviously not complete because of the mm. of the background and the, the the put on hand and all the rest of it, but but it is a very right. polished the, the the visage the face is very polished, isn't it? So so we go back to what we know about Salisbury as a portrait painter, and he was famed for having this facility which he'd honed over decades with with you know, tr really grand, um, um, uh, so influential sitters to capture them in between meetings at speed. So what, what you're seeing here is him doing the day job brilliantly well uh, with what he considered to be the ultimate subject. Now, Philip, if this were the Antiques Roadshow and I'd found this in my nan's loft, <laughs> <laughs> you know where this is going. <laughs> um, uh, you know, what's, what's, a, what's a thing like this worth? Well, I mean, it, it, as a piece of history and painting, it's, it's, it's pretty priceless, to tell you the truth, because 
Churchill has a huge following in, in, in America uh, and in this country. He was, after all, half American, yeah. let's not forget. Um, and uh, I, 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 don't, I think it's not an easy thing to price. As, as we know from his, his work that he produced himself, his own paintings, you know, they can make m many millions of pounds. Um, and uh, at, at this stage, I haven't given it thought. What, see, what we're, what we're looking at here, and it's always very difficult to value something like this, you're, you're looking at a really emotive and communicative piece of, of mid-20th century British heritage, um, uh, but one that has a global application. Yeah, yeah, and, a, and an interesting way for Frank Salisbury to, you know, who, to still be speaking to us um, 80 years later, because he's essentially, as you say, he's not—he wasn't—he's not a fashionable artist. He's not someone anyone's interested in particularly, but particular. But there he is with this encounter, and this piece that that, you know, it sort of actually in a way sits outside art and, and places itself in history, doesn't it? It does. It's a, it's a document as much as anything yeah. else, or a letter, or, yeah. or, or something else. But and, and actually, on the subject of letters, it is worth just keeping in mind, you know, from the from the early part of the 20th century. Churchill was a painter himself. He respected the art. He knew what, what oil on canvas could achieve, and he was forever trying to do it himself. He was, he was rarely without his, his oil paints you know, somewhere about him. Three weeks after this was painted, he wrote to Salisbury and said that, that the likeness was, you know, I, I quote, remarkable, um, given uh, the, the speed with which, in which it was done. Yeah. So it's actually rather nice to get the painter doffing his cap at the painter yeah. for having painted him yeah. so quickly and so convincingly. Yeah. And this will be housed forever here, is that the idea? Well, it's, it's on loan and uh, it, it's, it's now in an American collection uh, where um, it's, it has been before anyway. It's, it's, right. it's, it's changed hands now, but it's, it's in a, the hands of a very uh, responsible um, a collector. By that I mean someone who, who likes to share what they have. It's here for a couple of months. Um, I can't say what will happen after that, um, but um, I'm speaking to him later this evening, so I might try and find out. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I would urge anyone to, who's anywhere near London to come to the Church of War Rooms and have a look at this. I mean, it, it, it really is a... It's like he's in here with us. It, 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 well, it is a bit, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, it's an incredible thing. And not in an yeah. eyes follow you around the room way, because that's the other thing we should t yeah. explain to the listener. He, Churchill's he's looking off into the... Off to one side. He's, not, he's looking he's not, resolute, isn't he? He's, looking resolute, but he's, not, he's not doing a middle distance on, the, on us either. No. He's, he's, he's got his mind on, a, on higher things, doubtless. But, it, but it's, it's extraordinary. There's the, the man there, you know. And, 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 and I'm, I'm picking up on, on your response and what you said and also you know, clocking the fact of where we are. And art often performs best in, in an environment where it's allowed to. And, and in this extraordinary experiential museum, um, he's doing he's doing what he does best, yeah, and that is sort of being the historical personage in that living, breathing form that sometimes art can can imbue. Yeah, and also having that incredible char charisma that fills the room and draws everyone towards him. Yeah, you can't miss him in a hurry, can you? <laughs> no, <laughs> so, certainly not. So we're going to unveil him tonight, and um, uh, it'd be quite interesting to see because there will be a lot of people here across the room how, how people respond to him. Yeah, he's used to he's used to addressing a crowd, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, Philip, thank you so much for talking to us about this extraordinary. It's not it, it it it's it. I mean, you said it's like a letter, or it's like a diary entry, isn't mm. it? It's like a diary mm. entry in 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 portrait. Well, well, and 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 on that subject, in, in the process of researching it, the, the the eureka moment came when going through his wartime diaries, written with that beautiful fountain pen and these rather little mm. crisp, crisp sort of classically educated writing. Um, uh, although sometimes a little bit difficult to read, the afternoon of October the twenty fourth, nineteen forty four. Um, off to Chequers, uh, sitting with Mr. Salisbury, and and, you know, and that was you know often these these moments of art history you know, that the, the visual suddenly takes off when you have the words to go with it, yeah. and that was that moment. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, get down to the um, uh, cabinet war rooms, everybody. Churchill war rooms. Sorry, well. Churchill war rooms. Yeah. Um, mm. And and uh, have a look at. Church. Extraordinary, <laughs> extraordinary portrait, really. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Philip. It's been, yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been really, really enlightening, I yeah, think is the word. Absolutely. Well, it's been a great pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for asking me. Thanks for listening. Thanks everyone. for asking Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.
<laughs> cheerio. Uh, cheerio, everyone. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>